Hi everyone, I did say I was going to put another video up today, so here goes. But before I actually start talking about the bulb, I'm going to mention two vids which I saw yesterday and I was very impressed with them. Um, hoping the two concerned are not going to be embarrassed, but I'm going to mention their name. I had um, the um, Neon Jung, he put an excellent video up and I was very impressed. He was showing the wiring up of one of our compact uh, fluorescent lamps with the starter, the ballast and how to wire it up and giving a good description. Um, well, I didn't understand a word because I don't understand German but I know he did a very very good video indeed and I for one have congratulated him on that. Um, now we come to another gentleman electronic I've got to get this right electronic Kalkatechnik and Hooks Bunning. He wrote or he commented about something that I'll be quite honest, I know or knew nothing about. But I was interested to find out. Now, if I mention the words, got them written down here, next red, chemtrails, harp. To me, they didn't mean a thing. But obviously, they did to Chris, who put this little article up. They're obviously very worried about it. I think he's probably over worried but I don't know I, I don't know much about it but I did look it up on the computer I googled them and to give you a brief thing what they are next red is the next gen next generation of radar and it's to do with weather observations using the Doppler process now all right perhaps it does have uh, secret things I just don't know enough about it. It uses the X-band uh, radar uh, signal or frequency. Anyhow, chemtrails, I've never heard of that either. Chemtrails are said to be the, the exhaust or the vapours pushed out by planes. You see this, if you look up in the sky, you'll see a plane go by and they make a white trail behind it and that's presumably where they get the name from and chemicals being chemicals because they thought perhaps they do I don't know um, to contain chemicals which could cause poisoning apart from that I don't know any more that's what I found out on what's it now harp is the third item and this st stands for High Frequency Active Auroral Program. It's the equipment was actually put up by a subsidiary of an English firm. Uh, it's under the care, I think, of Alaska University. And that is to investigate the ionosphere. And it's the ionosphere which reflects um, radio signals back down to earth so if they get rid of that they're in big trouble because it also screens uh, various gases and cosmic rays and other various nasty things anyhow that's all I'm going to say on that except that I'm impressed that they've taken or rather Chris has taken the time to look it up and um, I feel he's very concerned about it and perhaps we should all be concerned. Um, I must admit, in England, I haven't heard much about it. But I think it's more known on the continent. Anyhow, once again, well done, you two. Two good videos. Um, get back to what I was talking about. Or trying to get back to what I was talking about. There's only one lamp today. I will light it up. I know you like seeing the bulbs lit up. It's known as a more light. It's 110 volts, so it's. I have to be careful with my uh, variac. I mustn't blow it out. Um, it's made in England. It's called Morlite. Now, 
I've traced that name in the history of the electric lamp. Now this was written by an expert, and I mean an expert, on electric lamps. Now he spells it, or it's spelt with an E, M-O-R-E, but I would say this would be the same lamp. It's probably a misprint, but on this one it's definitely more light, meaning it gives out more light. It's made in England, and this company was in operation, let me look it up, was in operation between 1925 and 1935 in England. So it's an English brand, and that probably gives an idea of the age. I'll light it up a bit later, so it's got the old Edison screw cap. It's got what we call, um, the filament's called a wreath. And it's a single coil, you can see it there, it's a single coil wreath. Supported by uh, molybdenum wires. Molybdenum being a metal that will stand the temperature of white hot tungsten filaments. We got on there one, two, three, four. At a rough count, it looks like there's five supports, but it's single coil. The wattage is 25, so it's uh, not a particularly bright light. But I would say it's had very little use. It's 110 volts. There's the shape. It's a parabolic shape, I suppose. It's like a reflector. Silvered. And the front is etched with probably hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is one acid which will dissolve glass. And this was probably uh, treated with that to give that frosting. It's not an inside frost, it's outside. And if you want to see inside, just spread a little bit of olive oil over the top. I won't do it now, but that's a way of looking inside at the actual filament and uh, at the construction. Anyway, that's more or less all, all I've got to say on the bulb. There's no internal fuses, just the two wires going up to the pinch inside. And there's your cap or base edge and screw. Anyway, before we light it up, I'm going to show you something which I got a few years, well more than a few years ago. It's the Glowlight International. Now I've made a copy of this for one of my friends who, uh, he doesn't know I've actually done a copy, but I have. And uh, hopefully when he gets it in the post, it'll be a surprise. Mind you, if he, re if he sees this video, it won't be a surprise. Anyhow, I've got the whole set and what I've done, I've done uh, the Glowlight International, which was two editions after the normal run of the Glowlight Collector. So this one's obviously the later one. I'm going to show you what's on here. Uh, the date, this is the date inside, a long time ago. There's some of the the, uh, the articles inside. They're quite, as I say, it's quite interesting. It was um, a handmade uh, a production. The gentleman who edited this, I understand, no longer deals with lamps. It's a pity, really, because he was one of the first in the bulb collecting fraternity, I, I suppose you could say, in some of the pictures. Also lists of lamps at the time. All in all, it's quite a good publication. You've even got a crossword. Lamps in North East London, UK. They're talking about the Edison Swan Company. The lamp works at Ponder's End in the Lee Valley. Turn the page. 
there's a view uh, of the actual company that was taken a good many years ago. Before my time, I may add. We've got a letter from Sir W.G. Armstrong. His was the first house lit electrically in this country. It was lit by lamps supplied by Joseph Swan. In fact, probably the first house in the world to be lit. Because Swan actually produced the lamp slightly before Edison. So this was prob probably the first house, well, mansion I should say. There's more pictures of it. It was under the Swan United Electric Light Company Limited, as it says on the top. Letter from W.D. Armstrong. You've got some old names and labels that you could find on lamps. Mind you, these are very old lamps that you would find them on. Here we have a we had a competition. You had to date the particular lamps. The only one I recognise is that one there. It's the old turn down lamp. I've got one, but unfortunately, one of the filaments does not work. I know you occasionally see these, but I don't see them. Not at boot sales. I think my friend's got one of these. I'm sure he has. Um, that looks like um, one by. Uh, oh hell! Oh, I'm terrible at remembering. He made the machine gun, or rather, his father did. Maxim. I think that's a Maxim type lamp. If someone out there knows, let me know. I think it's a Maxim. And that was the end of that edition. It was covered with funny, Ill funny illustrations, as you can see. But I say this really come out years before its time. So it's just a bit of interest. I have got the set, and as I say I've done a copy of the two international ones, which I shall be sending to my friend. Of course, now I've mentioned it, and he reads it. He'll know who I mean. Doesn't matter. Um, he'll probably, I'll probably do him the whole set of the other ones as well. It's nice to have copies. And I did mention the uh, the history of the electric lamp by Finn Stewart. He features in the grow the glow lamp as well. And uh, as I say. He and several others at the time were real experts on these lamps. And he, well, reading or looking through the CD on these lamps, there is so much information, it's unbelievable. Anyhow, I'm going to stop talking, I'm going to show you the lamp of light. Let me screw it in and make sure the the variac is off, it's unplugged anyhow, but the variac is off. I'll screw it in. I'll have to take the light off. Unplug the high intensity lamp. Double check, the variac is off. We plug it in. We jet now, it's only 110 volts, so We'll wind it up. I hope, yes, it's working. Now, I'm not going to wind it up too far. Um, I tend to just show them actually working. Uh, I don't put the full power on. Remember, these are old. That lamp is older than me. So, you have to give it a little bit of respect. So, there we are. There's the lamp. <clears throat> Turn it on its side so you can see it. I may have put this one up before, I cannot remember. I might have put it on lighting gallery in the past. Oh, I'm talking about uh, lighting um, forums. 
I thought it was about time I revisited Kilo Cats, which is another forum I'd been on there, but I hadn't hadn't done much on it of late. I suppose mainly because of my heart trouble when I was um, I couldn't do anything, but now I can. I'm catching up. So Kilo Cats is another site. Um, it's not quite the same as um, as Lighting Gallery. It's different, but it can't. They complement each other. And um, yep, they uh, joined that. And my friend always has re has joined it. I I was a member, and I mentioned it to him, and he hadn't heard of it, so he soon joined. <laughs> I think he's pleased he did. In fact, he answered one of the quest one of the questions that came up, right up his street. Excellent answer he gave. Anyhow, I'm I'm going to stop advertising on that. So once again, thanks again for watching. Any comments, please make. Um, and I say, you know, it's um, nice to be able to talk and mention these things. And as I say, I will always congratulate someone that has done a, an interesting uh, YouTube. And that's what I think it's all about. Anyhow, I'm going to go now. I might do another one today. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to cut down the amount of lamps I do. Rather than do great big long uh, videos, I'll do shorter ones. This one would have been shorter, but I had to mention uh, the Glowlight International and the other publication, which are both very, very valuable and very, very good. So I'm going to shut up, let you lot have a chance. Any comments, please make, and uh, I will catch you all later. Thanks for watching. <laughs>